Hi, this is Eddie Hearn, and you're watching Lights Out. This is Lights Out, I'm Fasal Khan, and I'm delighted to be joined by the voice of Sky Sports Boxing, Mr. Adam Smith. Firstly, Adam, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. Very good indeed. Looking forward to uh, getting on with this show, which I think is uh, one of the best cars we've uh, put together in a long time. And, um, yeah, really getting going on a what's going to be a phenomenal spring period, I think, for 2019 on Sky. Talk to us about uh, Charlie Edwards. You were there the night you won the world title. Just describe to me what was that feeling like to see Charlie Edwards fulfil a childhood dream and become world champion? I think the pictures of him rolling around the canvas afterwards said it all. It's, uh, it's a wonderful story. This sport uh, dishes them up time and again. And, you know, look, he had that chance at the same arena uh, a while back. It was too soon. He built himself back up. He learned from it. And I don't think anything was going to stop him, actually, uh, just before December, to winning that world title. It was a, a great display. Um, as I said, a fabulous tale. We used him, actually, as, a, as a, an analyst on Saturday night at the Ted Cheeseman show. And he was just so full of life, uh, really refreshing for the, uh, for, the, for the television broadcast. And uh, it's great to see him back on Sky Sports so quickly defending his world title. Uh, lovely guy uh, out of the ring and um, getting better and better inside. Do you think it sort of like opens more doors for prospects in boxing tax to perhaps make that push in challenging on world level at such an early stage in their career? Well, I think uh, as Eddie and I have said a few times, this is a year where we need the young to really come through. You know, you've got the likes of Joshua Boazzi and Josh Kelly and Anthony Fowler and, and Joe Cordina and, and so many others that, uh, that are just sort of about to break through and we need we need them to start, you know, really shining this year. Ted Cheeseman had his opportunity on Saturday. Uh, too much too soon for, uh, for Ted. You know, European level was, um, was too much on the night. Um, but, you know, you've got to take these chances, these opportunities. And uh, I'm sure that, you know, by the end of 2019, we'll really have seen you know, three or four of them come through. And they will be knocking on the door for uh, European and world title honours, no doubt. And of course, uh, Josh Boazzi going for the vacant uh, light heavyweight title. Firstly, what have you made of Josh Boazzi in his career? And secondly, what can you expect from Josh Boazzi in 2019? I'm extremely excited about Joshua Boazzi. Uh, I like everything I see about him in the ring. Uh, I think he's got a beautiful poise, balance. Um, I think he's going about his business fantastically. Outside of the ring, he's a, a pleasure to be around. He's cordial. He's, he's, a, he's a good guy. You know, he's a, a very interesting fellow as well. Uh, bright, you know, university degree, family man. And um, yeah, I really like what I see with Joshua Boatsy, and I think he can become a big star. And of course, uh, Lawrence Coley goes up against uh, Wadi Kamacha in an old British clash for the Commonwealth and uh, British title. What type of a fight can you expect to see from them too? Fiery, uh, no doubt about that. You know, uh, Wadi Kamacha brings uh, heat, he brings uh, a lot of talk as well to a ring. And Lawrence Coley needs good performances. We saw him sort of a mixed bag last year. You know, he was great against Luke Watkins, but sandwiched in between a Two dull fights, Isaac Chamberlain and Massey Askin, um, which didn't show Lawrence in, in the best light. I mean, Lawrence is, if you want personality, if you want charisma, if you want a star of the future, you know, he's certainly got that side of it. We just need to make sure that uh, the in-the-ring action is, uh, is exciting. I thought he looked really good on uh, Saturday. He was trying things out. He wasn't loading up. Um, I think he's obviously got a, a great new rapport with his new coach. And look, I think that Lawrence will go places in the sport. Um, be interesting to see how far and how quickly. Uh, but Wadi Camacho will want to shut him right up on uh, March 23rd. And um, it'll be interesting to see if he, uh, if he can do that. Now, of course, you know, there's a question on everyone's mind and it moves to the heavyweight division. What's going on with Anthony Joshua, you know? I mean, it looks like he might be likely to fight um, Jarrell Miller in America. I'm reading reports say that there's a chance of him fighting on April the 13th against Kubrat Pulev. Could you give us any sort of, like, you know, indication of what the next step for Anthony Joshua will be? Well, we all thought it was going to be uh, Anthony Joshua against Dillian White on April 13th at, at Wembley, but as Dillian told everybody on Saturday night, the AJ fight's dead, he moves on. I think he's looking at a date in April. Um, I mentioned the likes of Brazil or Povetkin or Ortiz or one of those. Uh, AJ and Miller uh, have been in talks, and um, I expect that fight to happen. I expect that fight to happen early June, and uh, I think it is actually a really good move from uh, the Joshua camp, you know, to, to go global, to take on America at this time, 
time, knowing that Wilder and Fury are going to meet in their much-anticipated rematch. Um, let's get them all over there. Uh, let's have a new story. Jarrell Miller's a, a phenomenal talker. He's unbeaten. Um, and if it lands in the garden and it lands in the summer, what a night it's going to be and what a build-up. And of course, you mentioned the highly anticipated rematch between uh, Deontay Wilde and Tyson Fury. Now, would the would it not make sense for the winner of that rematch to fight the winner of perhaps Joshua versus Miller if it does happen? You know, for all the marbles, for all the belts, and to really decide who is the king of the heavyweight division. Of course, it would. I mean, that's exactly in an ideal world. We do want one unified champion. Anthony Joshua wants that. Tyson Fury wants that. Deontay Wilder wants that. But you and I know that politics and broadcasters and all sorts get in the way of that. For me, Wilder and Fury had a terrific fight uh, last year. I thought Tyson Fury should have won. I uh, thought he was robbed that night. And, um, and you know, to get up off the 12th round knockdown was miraculous in my opinion. But I think Deontay Wilder would be better in the rematch. And I think a rematch has to happen. Um, I think that's the right fight to happen. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, because obviously if uh, it's another great fight or let's see what the decision is, there could be a third. So the Joshua fight might not happen for quite a while, but I know that AJ wants to fight both of them. Uh, but at the moment, he's got to get on with his own business. He holds four of the belts and, uh, you know, he is already a unified world champion. He's just not the undisputed yet. But uh, I'm sure his chance will come to prove himself. And we all want to see him fight Wilder or Fury, but we also want to see Wilder Fury. We, you know, in the end, we managed to get Tyson versus Lewis. We managed to get Mayweather versus Pacquiao. The fight that everybody wants to see is that all British class showdown between Fury and Anthony Joshua. Now, we know Fury is with um, Frank Warren, and we know Anthony Joshua is with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom. What's it going to take to make that fight happen? And what's your thoughts on the so called 50 50 split that everyone's been talking about? Money will make that fight. Let's just cut straight to the chase. That's what will happen. I think he was offered 60-40, wasn't he? Tyson Fury, they want 50-50. If he goes and does a job on Wilder, I'm sure that will be, uh, that will be uh, handled in the right way. Um, the fight will happen. The fight will happen at some point. It's got to happen. Uh, it's too big a fight at the moment. They both want it. You know, we've seen big fights in the past not happen. You mentioned Lewis Tyson. That happened far too late. You mentioned Mayweather Pacquiao. We should have had three of them before that fight ever materialised. We never got Lewis and Bo. Um, we should have done. You know, they met in the uh, in the Olympics. We should have had them as, as pros. And there was a time I think Riddick Bow would have given Lennox Lewis a, a, a torrid time. But then, definitely. Uh, and, and there's there's a chance there's a time when Lewis would have just completely schooled him. So that was a fight we, we were robbed of as fans. We're also robbed on domestic level of uh, of Hatton and Witter, uh, which would have been a really interesting one for for a number of years. That was mooted. We also haven't seen Calm Brook, and I thought we were going to get that one this time. So they don't always happen. But I think this is heavyweight boxing and there's astronomical money involved. And I think AJ Fury will happen and I think it will happen probably within the next 12 to 18 months. Last question, you mentioned Amir Khan. Uh, what chance do you give him going up against Terence Crawford for the world title? It's a tough fight, but then Amir has always taken the tough road. Um, he's got beautiful hand speed, as we know. He's got talent. Um, I wasn't that impressed with him against Sammy Vargas, but he'll be really up for Terence Crawford. Yes, he's going to start the underdog. A lot of people are writing him off already. Terence Crawford is a, a very, very good fighter. You know, one of the best pound for pound in the world. Um, you know, it's it's a tough ask for Amir. Um, you know, it's uh, it's one that he's going to have to be at his absolute best, and maybe even catch Crawford on a on an off night. Um, but he's got a chance. He's always had talent, and uh, he loves a challenge. So don't write him off. Adam Smith, thank you very much for your time, and thank you. Talk to lights out. No problem at all. Thank you very much.